Hello, my name is Maria Lyle and I'd like to introduce you to my talk which I've called Turn Tragedy into Triumph. Now I'll speak a little bit about this quote towards the end of the talk but I'd like to introduce myself. So I'm a para-athlete who competes in the 100 and 200 metres for people who have got cerebral palsy. Now I'm a Paralympic, World, Commonwealth and European medalist. Along with my running, I'm also an advocate for mental health. Um, I'm someone who suffers from mental health. I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression in 2018. Um, I've used my platform to speak about mental health issues with the aim of trying to help someone who was in the situ situation like myself to go and seek some help. So now I'll speak a bit about my disability. So I've got cerebral palsy which affects both my legs and slightly down my arm. Now cerebral palsy is caused by a brain, a brain injury before or during birth. So mine's was before birth and um, my mum had contracted the shingles when she was six months pregnant with me um, which has then caused my cerebral palsy. Um, we didn't find out about my cerebral palsy until I was two. So this was because I was missing milestones and um, I wasn't developing just the way my sister was. Um, so when we found out about my diagnosis both my parents were a bit concerned and worried about what this would mean for the rest of my life. However, um, they've pushed me and have made sure that I um, achieve everything that I want to achieve and haven't treated me any differently. Now, there's some negatives to having a disability. Um, the main thing that really affects me is about, um, or did affect me quite heavily, um, is about my self-worth. Um, I didn't quite believe in myself and I, I was really worried about how other people um, viewed me. Um, I didn't think people would think I was worthy or I was likeable. Um, and also certain teachers had perceptions of me before they even um, got to know me. Um, and that, that affected me a lot. Along, along with like the self-worth, obviously, um, it affects my mobility in everyday life. Um, when I was younger, I would trip and fall all the time. I'd have to wear splints, which is like a leg brace, to help me with my walking. So I had that on both legs. Um, and I was just, I struggled a lot with everything, um, especially school. Um, so... Yeah, I was feeling a bit, bit rubbish about myself, um, but I didn't really see myself as any different. I just knew I had a bit more challenges than others. So where things get a bit more cheerier was when I had taken part in a PE lesson when I was in primary four. Now, um, as a coincidence, my mum was my primary school PE teacher and we had to do the bleep test, uh, it's also called the multi-stage fitness test and I was, <laughs> when I heard about this I was like oh my god, um, I was not looking forward to this, um, I struggled with the, most things in school and this was just going to be something that I was going to, I felt I was going to humiliate myself and another thing to add to the list of things I was going to be bad at. Um, but my mum would say, come on, just give it a try. Um, and if you've tried, then that's all you can do. So, so I did. And actually, I surprised everyone, um, along with myself. Um, I managed to complete all levels of the test. And I was the last one in the test. Um, and that was the first time I'd ever felt that sense of achievement. And I was... I was so happy. I'd never, I'd never achieved anything like that before. I'd been good at anything or better at other people. Um, and I was buzzing for the rest of the day and probably the rest of the week about it. So from that point, um, my mum had to start, had decided, oh, I don't know what we get you into a running club and we can go out run for runs and stuff. Um, it was something we thought would be good for my mobility. But also the big thing about um, joining the running club and doing all this different, all this extra running was it gave me that sense of um, inclusion 
Like I'd never felt included in something before because I always struggled. And being able to join in with the training sessions at the running club um, and making friends from that, it was something like, I, I was really happy, I really enjoyed myself. Um, along with the self-worth and like the positive stuff that um, I felt um, also helped me with my mobility. Um, I no longer needed my splints. Um, my parents chucked them out the bin, um, out into the bin, sorry. Um, I was no longer tripping up over my feet. I could walk better and everyday tasks became a bit easier because my coordination was improving. Um, so from that I started to compete. Initially I just done a body competitions with the club um, but my mum and dad started taking me to some disability competitions. Um, I never heard of the Paralympics before but my mum had um, and she thought this could be something you could try Maria. Um, so I went along. I'd never really viewed myself as like oh like a disability just because I was from such a small place um I'd never really seen myself as any different but going to these competitions everything was fairer and it, it was a good level of competition um so my mum and dad started well gave up all their time um and would travel up and down the country um helping me with competitions, taking me to this training session, this and that. And eventually I got picked up by um, Great Britain and the Scottish Athletics team. Um, and that's where the hobby kind of ended and my running became a bit more serious for me. Um, I still had those feelings of, I don't, I don't know what people would think of me, I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous, I'm a bit shy. So I kind of used my running as something I would just kind of, kind of just concentrate on and hide away from those feelings. So my first um, competition I competed for Great Britain um, was the Europeans. I was 14. Um, that's the youngest you can be to compete at a Paralympic event. And I'd won two gold medals and... It was it was it was a nice it was a nice event because that was the first time mum and dad had gone to see me compete at a big international. I got um different um media speaking to me and it was a, an experience I'd never experienced before. Um, but then I was like, you know, I we need to take my training a bit more seriously. So I started to drift from like the local running club and I'd go to specific coaches. And then everything was all revolved around my running. No, I wasn't, it was never forced by no one, but it was my choice that everything was revolved around my running. And as I, like, I was starting high school at this point, and as I was starting to feel less and less confident about, but I didn't really rate myself, the more I dived into my running. So as the years went on, I became, I would, the sense of unhappiness got heavier and heavier and it started to affect my running because um, I would use my running to like help build myself up and my self esteem and make myself feel good. Um, but then I would start to become very critical of my running, but I oh, know that, that's a rubbish time I ran, I shouldn't have placed this. Um, I went to the Paralympic Games and won three medals and I was not satisfied. I felt um, I decided not to go to all this celebration stuff afterwards because I felt like I didn't deserve to. Um, I was just, the, just the feelings of unhappiness were just getting heavier and heavier. And I was like, you know what, I need to sort myself out. Um, which you think, oh, it's positive, but actually maybe wasn't the right step. I was like, yeah, my training, I need to sort it out. I need to sort my running out. So I decided to go down south near London to train with a really good sprint coach and his training group. So um, I moved to this college where he worked at and he had an athletic space there. It was really good set up. Um, but I was just miles away from home. I was on the other side of the country and I just felt 
uh, just I began to feel homesick and the feelings of unhappiness just got heavier and heavier and then I started to use food as a way uh, would, to make myself feel better I'd comfort eat and maybe not have the best habits um, and I put on a bit of weight and I think I stayed down in London for just like under a year because I was really missing home and I was just like you know this is just not for me so I went back home and I'd noticed um, my appearance my weight and I was like oh god I've put on I've put on so much weight which I hadn't but at the time you're so focused on that so I was like god I've put on weight I was never this big before and I was like you know what I need to lose weight so I was so fixated on a diet um so I was you know what? I can't eat carbs because carbs are making me big I need to shred and be lean so I was scared of carbs I wouldn't eat them I really stripped my diet I wouldn't eat any treat foods I would only have something like once a week which was hardly anything um and then I was like, I was kind of losing weight, but I wasn't, I was still unhappy and I wasn't doing it the best way. I wasn't, it wasn't very healthy. And that year it went to 2018 was, uh, my running was really like getting a bit worse. And so was my unhappiness. Um, it was just like an unhealthy cycle. I was feeling rubbish about myself. That would affect my running. I run poorly. And then that would make me feel even worse. So it was just this unhealthy cycle that I couldn't get myself out of. And eventually, and um, that summer, I broke down. Um, I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, I confided in my parents, and I was like, you know what? I just, I just, I feel so rubbish about myself. I've got no friends, and um, nobody likes me. Um, running rubbish. I, I'm just. I feel awful. Um, and that 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 was it was a really rough time for me. Um, I had Europeans coming up as well at that time, and my coaches and the team staff at Great Britain were aware of my diagnosis. So I've been diagnosed with um anxiety and depression the following day. So they were aware of this. Um. And they asked, you know, do you still want to come or do you want to sit out? It's completely fine. I was like, no, I'll go because I had been, I trained really hard. Although my results uh, may not have shown it, but I had. Um, so I went to the competition. Um, luckily, I won. Um, I won um, the gold medal in the hundred meters. I was still in a. It was still in like a rough space in my head I was just still not feeling very right um but I decided that I would be open and honest so at the end of your race you had go through a media zone and I'd, I spoke to a few reporters and I thought I would be honest and say listen um I've been diagnosed with this um with anxiety and depression I've been feeling a bit rubbish about myself I just kind of explaining it what had been going on, and this the story got picked up by different, um, different media um sources, and um companies, and it kind of made me feel a bit good about myself. A weight had been lifted off my shoulder, because I kind of felt if I had heard somebody struggle, um, especially in a sporting perspective. Um, about different things maybe I would have gone and seeked out help earlier on um, so I thought I'll use my platform just to do that so I got a good I got a good response um, so then I turned so when I came back home um, I decided that my life needed to change for the better so after the competition I start I went back and I started to see a counsellor now it was probably the best thing I've ever done. Um, the the main thing we did at the counselling was we would find out the root of the problem, and once we've done that, we can find solutions to make myself feel better. So, um, 
we discovered, or it was probably quite obvious once you've got a clear mind, was that I was so obsessed with what people thought of me. If they liked me, if they thought I was weird because of my disability, I really worried about that and that nobody wanted to be my friend. And I'd use my running to hide behind that. And because I only really had my running, that would be the brunt, that would get the brunt of all the negative feelings. So everything was negative in my life. So as a solution, we thought we need to have a bit more to my life, a bit more substance, if you like. Um, so the first thing I did was to have something else along with my running. I applied for an apprenticeship. So I'd, done, I'd had my apprenticeship with the Scottish Parliament. Um, so I'd done that for seven months. It was a great experience. I then decided I need, to, I need to be a bit more sociable. It's something I'm really uncomfortable with. Um, but it's, I want to improve that in my life. Um, so first of all, I started off, I went to a mental health group. I thought these people don't know me, so they won't have any, um, any assumptions about me. So I only went a few times. It was the, the group were mainly a lot older than I was. And it was interesting hearing their stories because it made me feel um, like I wasn't the only one. And I was actually coping okay. Um, so it made me feel a bit better about myself. And from then, I kind of got, got in contact with people I'd gone to school with who I felt comfortable speaking to again. And kind of explained about my situation, about um, being diagnosed with this anxiety and depression, about how I felt um, around people, peers my age. And I was like, I was wanting to make an effort to be friends. And I, I wanted, that's something I've wanted to develop. And um, that was a big, that was a big achievement for me. Even just like going for like a coffee to sit for an hour with someone else, like, like I knew from school. Whereas before I would be absolutely terrified. Of, like I would hate seeing people I knew out in public. Um, so I kind of like, that was slowly, slowly I went there. And um, something that um, thought I thought would never happen is I actually met my boyfriend, um, which was, that's, probably been one of the best things well or if the best that is probably the best thing that's happened to me um he's very caring and understanding and um that's given me another purpose in my life so with all these different things I've going on it's it's been it's healthy I've got different things to focus on um and to distract me if they say something else isn't going well um, so with these going on, I started to enjoy life again. And then last year, so 2019, um, I started to notice a big difference with my running. Um, I was enjoying my running again. I was enjoying training because I had all these different other things going on. Um, and my running was benefiting greatly from it. Um, my times were getting quicker. Um, I was just enjoying the whole experience of being at a competition and going through the processes of training. So I was very lucky to be selected for the World Champs, which were in Dubai in November. Um, and that was probably the first championship. So I was like, you know what, I'm actually looking forward to going to this. Now the aim was never a certain time or medals, which was something that completely different, a completely different mindset that I had gone into beforehand. Um, and so I went to the competition. I was, I was happy. I was enjoying myself. I had my coach out there, which was great. And we had a good time. And then I was actually buzzing to compete. And luckily I managed to win double gold in the 100 and 200 meters. Now the, um, the biggest achievement from that wasn't the two gold, but actually how I managed to pull off the competition in a way, how I changed my mindset from being so scared and negative to actually enjoy myself, being laid back and thinking running isn't everything. So to conclude the talk, um, I'd want to go back to my quote I said earlier at the start. So it's turned tragedy into triumph. Now I have, I've had different levels of 
tragedies in my life. So basically, the meaning is to turn a negative into a positive. Now, the main one being have been feeling really rubbish about myself, poor mental health, and actually trying to do something about that. Um, so me, that being, just looking at everything and not taking things too seriously and being open and honest about how I feel. Now, um, as I've said before, um, I will and will continue to use my platform to um, let people know about how I feel about my mental health and what I've experienced because I think that's really important to help because that can help somebody else even if it's just one person because maybe they'll think you know what I feel exactly like that and they'll know how to sort that out um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed my talk um, one thing I will ask you to take away from this is just to kind of think about how you feel if there's anything you've struggled with or felt anxious with um and being honest with people if there's somebody you can speak to and say listen I'm not feeling a hundred percent um and that that can change your whole life it is so important and I know myself um it's, it is hard to say listen I'm feeling a bit rubbish but it is needed um, and also don't just concentrate on one thing it's important to have lots of different things in your life to have different aims it, and different so what, say if something's not going well you can distract yourself you've got another positive so it's not just all one negative thing and finally um me I'm somebody who did care about what people felt about me um, and what, how what people, yeah, what, how people like thought of me. Um, and it's just, don't, don't care. It's like probably most of it is in your head. You're thinking things that people probably haven't even thought about. Everyone probably just thinks you're fine. Um, but I can understand it is hard. And we should all take time to appreciate ourselves, to reflect, um, decide if there's things, oh, you know, I'm not feeling great. Why not we sort out and we can speak to someone. But also think, you know, what? I'm actually, I'm doing well. Um, I've, I've got something I can celebrate about myself. I've got something good about me. And it's to make sure we acknowledge that and um, we take the time to um, love ourselves. So, take, turn a tragedy into a triumph, turn a negative into a positive. It, we all have different things that go wrong, but we can always fix our situation. So, um, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope I've not rambled on too much. Um, and it's been a great opportunity to be able to do this. So, thank you very much. <laughs>